How's it going everybody? It's Chris with Gold Lotus Popper MTG and today we have a very special video. We're going to be taking a look at the very best common from every year of Magic the Gathering from the last 30 years. Starting clear back in Alpha, we're going to take a year by year journey through the years and determine what is the best common. Starting in 1993, Lightning Bolt from Alpha. So there's a lot of cards in this early set that is actually still played today and there's a lot of powerful cards and Lightning Bolt just seems to be the one that is played the most. It's played in practically every format that is allowed and Lightning Bolt is probably the most played card in the Popper format aside from some sideboard techs. But other cards in this year uh, include Red Elemental Blast, Blue Elemental Blast, and the now banned Sinkhole. 1994, Hymn to Turok from Fallen Empires. Another card that is currently banned in the proper format, Hymn to Turok is probably single-handedly the best discard spell at common, and it is a testament of why it is banned in the format. There's some other cards in this set, or the sheer, that are actually very, very good, and it was really hard to determine which one was the best, but I had to go with Hymn to Turok as it is banned for a reason. Other cards from this year is the Urza lands. So you have Urza's Mine, Tower, and Power Plant. They came out in 1994, as well as Ornithopter, Ashnot's Altar, Chain Lightning, and Dust to Dust. So you have a lot of really good cards for the Popper format in that year. 1995, Counterspell from Ice Age. So this one was another one that was really, really difficult for me, as both Brainstorm and Counterspell and Hydroblast and Pyroblast all came out of the same year. I ended up going with Counterspell over Brainstorm simply because Counterspell kind of set the precedent for what is to be from a Counterspell. You know, obviously, two mana is the absolute max for a Counterspell, and uh, the harder the counter, the better it is, and Counterspell is basically the best Counterspell in the proper format. Brainstorm is a very powerful draw engine, but I just feel like Counterspell had a little bit more to give back to the format as well as the game in general. 1996, Wall of Roots from Mirage. So I'm not going to lie, this was kind of a lackluster year. They didn't have a lot of cards that I currently still see play, nor a lot of uh, commons that are actually that great. Wall of Roots does see a little bit of fringe play in some of the wall combo decks. So I just kind of unanimously gave it to Wall of Roots simply because it was the best of the crowd. So unfortunately, there wasn't any others that really stood out. 1997, Lotus Petal from Tempest. So this was a pretty easy one. Obviously, Lotus Petal sees some play in some certain combo decks, but it doesn't take away from the fact of how powerful of a common this is. This card still sees play in competitive EDH as well as some other stuff. A zero-costing mana rock that you can cast or tap to add any color mana is no joke, and obviously is um, one of the best uh, artifacts in the game for artifact-centric decks. A few other noteworthy cards from this set are Crypt Rats and Rolling Thunder, both of which still see play to this day in the proper format. 1998, Duress from Urza Saga. So this year had a couple of cards that actually still see quite a bit of play and are key cards in multiple decks. But I end up going with Duress just for the simple fact that Duress is such a great sideboard card in the proper format. It's essentially the thought seize of the proper format. Duress is able to take away many, many combo pieces, counter spells, removal spells, and Duress is just an excellent sideboard strategy against decks that don't play a lot of creatures as well. Some other noteworthy cards from this year, though, is Tortured Existence, better known as the Tortex, Priest of Titania, and Exhum, all of which see some play in certain decks in the proper format. 1999, Gush from Mercadian Masks. So this was another year that was pretty loaded for commons, and uh, you see, can clearly see that there is a ton from Mercadian Masks. You had Cloud of Fairies, Rancor, Snap, Frantic Search, Invigorate, and Snuff Out, some of which still see play to this day. But I had to go with Gush simply for the fact that it is currently banned for a reason. It is a very, very, very powerful free draw spell that essentially is going to uh, doesn't neg you any and you just get to draw a couple cards for free basically so 2000 armadillo cloak from invasion so this set was or this year was actually kind of unique there wasn't a ton of really really over the top good cards but armadillo cloak is a very powerful card and sees play in the boggles decks and it stacks very well with the lifelink since it doesn't count as lifelink 
Another noteworthy card is Ristic Circle, as it is an emerging player in the new Mono White Ristic Tron. And I'm going to go ahead and give Ristic Study an honorable mention, simply for the fact that it is a common from the set. It doesn't actually see play in the Pauper format, so I'm basing this more on the Pauper format as than I am just commons. But if it was just commons, Ristic Study would definitely take the cake here. Obviously, Ristic Study is one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful, draw engine spell in EDH. Uh, it's actually legal in Pauper, but nobody plays it. And... Um, but I'm going to give it an honorable mention just because it does uh, deserve it as a common. 2001 Sunscape Familiar from Plane Shift. So when looking over 2001, there was not that many like really over-the-top powerful cards. But Sunscape Familiar is definitely a very powerful card as it is the, ma the main enabler for the Blue White X Familiar deck. It's a pseudo combo control deck and is a very powerful mana reducing card as well as a good blocker. But Sunscape Familiar gave birth to an entire archetype, so it's definitely a very powerful common. Some other ones that are noteworthy here are Terminate and Standard Bearer, both of which still see play today and are very good in their own retrospects. 2002, Prismatic Strands from Judgment. So this year had actually a couple of really good cards, and I ended up giving it to Prismatic Strands just for the fact that any deck in the form that plays white really plays Prismatic Strands as it is the premier fog effect for the format. And another card that actually came out of this year actually is basically designed to stop Prismatic Strands, and uh, that's Flaring Pain. A couple other noteworthy cards is Cabal Ritual, Mental Note, and Lava Dart, still all of which see a lot, ton of play in the popper format, especially cards like Mental Note in Tolarian Terror decks, as well as Cabal Ritual in Cycle Storm. 2003, Cloud Post from Mirrodin. So this year was absolutely stacked with the set Mirrodin that came out. There was a ton of really good cards running for best card, but I'm gonna give it to Cloud Post. For any of you guys don't know, in the early days of Pauper, uh, eight post was a thing with Cloud Post and Glimmer Post, and essentially you didn't even use the Tron lands, you just used the Cloud Post and Glimmer Post, and created, essentially you could create nine mana by turn three. Uh, it was pretty crazy, and um, the fact that they're currently banned is a is a huge sign that they're definitely one of the most powerful, if not most powerful, lands to ever come out of Pauper. Some other honorable mentions, and this is really hard for me because I kind of wanted to give it to the artifact lands, like the original Mirrodin artifact lands, but I just felt like the cloud post posed such a problem for the format that eight posts uh, was basically had to be banned. So Artifact Lands definitely get an honorable mention. Also Mirror Enforcer, Thoughtcast, Kark Clan, Shaman, and Disciple of Vault. I know it all just looks like a bunch of affinity stuff, but this set was very, very big on artifacts and stuff. So obviously there's gonna be a ton of artifact centric cards and affinity stuff. So 2004, Cranial Plating from Fifth Dawn. So this was kind of a no brainer seeing how Cranial Plating was the very first card to be banned in the Pauper format, and Cranial Plating would just absolutely dominate this format in today's world because of the fact that everything is such artifact-centric. Cranial Plating is basically a more versatile all that glitters, being the fact that you can basically equip it at instant speed. So you just attack with a bunch of creatures, whichever one isn't blocked, you just, uh, you know, instant speed equipped it to them. So. Other noteworthy cards from this year is Darksteel Citadel, aka the very first original indestructible artifact land. And you also had Echoing Decay and Echoing Truth, both of which see sideboard action. 2005, Ninja of the Deep Hours from Betrayers of Kamigawa. So in this year, there wasn't a ton of really good cards, but there was a ton of decent cards so you had stuff like the transmute cards from ravnica city of guilds as well as the dredge cards so like uh, golgari brown scale and stuff like that and stinkweed imp so you had a lot of very good mechanically inclined cards but i'm going to give it to ninja of the deep powers just because it's seen play since basically the very beginning of the popper format it pairs very well with evasive threats uh, mostly paired with fairies, seeing how you get a bunch of benefits from the fairies. You can just keep kind of recycling them with the ninja jitsu ability. So we're going to give it to Ninja the Deep Hours. 2006, Empty the Warrens and Grave Shot from Time Spiral. So I'm kind of giving it a two-way tie between these two because they're both essentially do the same thing. They're a win con for the Storm Index in the early days of Pauper when Storm was basically... 
uh, just running rampant and everything was, you know, uh, Storm and Trondex. These two cards absolutely got obliterated by the ban list. Obviously, Wizard of the Coast had to put an end to the Storm decks as they were just overbearingly powerful. So, Empty the Wardens and Grape Shot absolutely take the cake on this. Uh, there's no doubt that Storm is a mechanic that is absolutely abused. And uh, y if you you know if you never played during a format with you know peak Storm, consider yourself lucky because it's basically just watching your opponent play solitaire, seeing if you're going to die or live to see the next turn. Other cards in this set are actually really good. You have Guardian of the Guild Pact, Utopia Sprawl, Scred, and Chromatic Star, all of which see absolutely a ton of play even to this day. And uh, they're very all very, very, very good. It's just Empty the Warrens and Grape Shot are absolutely better than them. 2007, Mall Drifter from Lorwyn. So this one was also a really tough one for me just because there's two other cards that came out and are absolutely very, very good cards. But Mall Drifter to me is just the epitome of the most value you can get from one card. So Mall Drifter is not, not only just an evasive flying threat, but it does give you two cards back in your hand and when paired with abusive things like ephemerate or ghostly flicker uh you're gonna get multiple activations out of the etb and get multiple draws and it's just an absolute great draw engine so mall drifter definitely took the cake here the other cards that are very very good still from that year are spell stutter sprite ponder and even simeon spear guide so obviously spell stutter sprite one of the main fairies of the fairy archetype uh very very good i just think it's, it's a little bit uh very flat and not you know doesn't have a lot of ways to incorporate itself into multiple decks where mall drifter can kind of just splash itself into a deck and it's going to do well no matter what uh you also have ponder uh which is basically a very very good cantrip for drawing and setting up the top of your deck and uh it's right up there with brainstorm and preordain 2008 relic of progenitus from shards of alara so this one was also kind of tough for me because of the fact that this came out the same year as Slippery Boggle, uh, but I'm going to give it to Relic of Progenitus just because it is such a powerful common uh, artifact, graveyard hate, it replaces itself by drawing. I think Relic of Progenitus just brings so much value to your sideboard against you know graveyard centric decks that I just had to give it to that over Slippery Boggle because it's a little bit more versatile and it does a little bit more. But Slippery Boggle obviously gave birth to the entire Boggle archetype, so I couldn't go without saying that Boggles is an absolute bomb of a, a common. Another uh, card in this year is Unmake and Manamorphose, two really good cards in their own mind. There you find homes in a couple of different pauper decks in today's format. Uh, more so Unmake with the rise of the new Orzhov Blade deck. And Manamorphose used to see some play in the Killin' Fiend deck, which is currently dying off, but still is a very, very powerful card. 2009 Expedition Map from Zendikar. So, again, this was a very heavily loaded year for commons in the Pauper format, and uh, this one is actually kind of tough again, but I'm going to give it the Expedition Map simply because of the fact that it was actually banned for a short while, and then it came off the ban list. Um, it worked very, very well with the Tron lands and also the 8 post lands, Basically getting you any single land you need, not just a basic, not just a, like a, you know, a forest or a plains, but any land you want from your deck, put it in your hand. So this is an excellent way to filter for what you need, whether you're playing Tron or 8 post. This was a very powerful artifact that uh, basically was a perfect filter for your land. So I think it just did a little bit more and gave a little bit more to the uh, game plans that you know it would go into whether it was tron or eight posts i just think expedition map just did a little bit more but the other cards in this set that absolutely dominate still are goblin bushwhacker which sees basically is the one of, one of the namesake cards of mono red called dotha journey to nowhere which is premium white removal and common spell pierce and core skyfish are both very very efficient powerful cards this was just a very great year for popper uh so kudos to zendikar 2010 galvanic blast from scars of mirrodin so again this was a very very good year for popper and commons 
So I actually had a hard time deciding because there was multiple cards this year as well. But Galvanic Blast is just one of those cards that if you're playing red and you have access to the artifact lands, there's no point in not playing Galvanic Blast. It's basically at worst it's a shock and at best it's better than Lightning Bolt. So Galvanic Blast just sees much more play than the rest of these because it's being it's able to be splashed in all decks that run red and can use the artifact lands as well. Other cards from this year that absolutely just are bombs is Prophetic Prism. I know it's banned, but I just feel like Prophetic Prism has been replaced by like Energy Refractor in this likes. Preordain, another cantrip that allows you to kind of set up the top of your deck with draw. Squadron Hawk, you know, shout out to my, my uh, squad. Uh, absolutely love this card. Uh, I played it back in the day in Standard during Call Go and Call Blade, and now I still play it in Blue White Call Gate, so... And then obviously Glimmer Post, uh, the other half of the 8 post deck, and Kaldotha Rebirth, which is the namesake card of the Mountain Red Kaldotha, which is an absolutely crazy deck, and uh, it has been featured in multiple videos across the YouTubes about how powerful it is. So, 2011 Gitaxian Probe from New Phyrexia. So this is another year again so we had multiple years in a row that were very good this is very kind to us in the form of new phyrexia as we got introduced to a bunch of very powerful cards um Gitaxian probe it just easily takes a cake as it is currently banned and it'll always be banned it's basically a free draw spell that allows you very very valuable information from your opponent knowing what is in their hand it is very very good for control decks and also combo decks to kind of set up and see if they can go all in on the combo and uh you know but obviously it's currently banned and it probably will always be banned other cards from 2011 that are outstanding Blade Cover Scout, which is the second half of the Slippery Boggle deck. Delver's Secrets came out this year as well. One of the, if not most powerful, one-drop creatures in the entire game. Sees play in Legacy, Pauper, anything, anywhere where it's legal. Mutagenic Growth and Glistener Elf, all of which see play in the Infect deck. 2012 Faithless Looting from Dark Ascension. So this year was kind of light on the pauper scene commons, but Faithless Looting still sees some fringe play, but it, I'm not going to take away from the fact that it is one of, if not the most powerful red draw engine spells out there by the fact that you're drawing to and you're discarding to, which can be highly relevant, and it has flashback all for the cost of one. So very efficient common, very efficient draw and discard engine for the pauper format. Other cards in this year that were worth mentioning is Ghostly Flicker, a card that is used a lot in combination with combo wins, as well as Ethereal Armor, one of the best, if not best, one-drop auras in the, the game. 2013, Grey Merchant of Asphodel from Theros. All of you guys probably know Grey Merchant as Gary. He is basically the anchor to the Mono Black Control or Mono Black Devotion deck. Grey Merchant is one of the, if not best, black creatures in the game. Just for the simple fact that it's, it, it's such a powerful card that it can definitely t change the tides of the entire game when it drops if you have a high devotion. And uh, if it wasn't for Gary, I don't think Mono Black Control would be as good as it is or ever was. But uh, definitely Grey Merchant gets the nod here. 2014 only brought one card, but it was a very, very good card. And I have to apologize because I'm going to say it's Monastery Swiss Spear from Khan's of Tarkir. I know this year that it was actually an uncommon. It was originally printed as an uncommon, not a common. But I'm putting it here just because there was nothing else in 2014. So I'm just going to say Monastery Swiss Spear this year. Obviously, it got downshifted much later on. And uh, But for the fact that this was the year that it was introduced, I'm going to say that it was 2014 rather than the year it was downshifted. 2015 Gurmag Angler from Fate Reforged. So the Mag gets the nod here, as it is obviously a very powerful card. It is played in things like Demir Terror, as well as Reanimator decks and Dredge decks. Very powerful, cost effective, basically 5 5 creature for one black. Uh, it sees play in other formats as well. It's just a big body for a reduced cost because of the way you have to alternatively cost it or cast it from a hard cast. Other noteworthy cards from this set are Teamer Battle Rage and Fairy Miscreant, both see play in their respective archetypes. 
2016 Monarch Creatures from Conspiracy Take the Crown. So I just gave this, I actually gave this to a, a clump of creatures, just saying they're the Monarch creatures, the ones that when you enter the battlefield, uh, you get the Monarch. Monarch is a very, very, very powerful mechanic that was never meant to see play in Constructed. It's meant to see play in things like Limited as well as Commander. But being that this is an eternal format, we have access to any card ever printed at common. So the Monarch creatures see a ton of play in Pauper. And still to this day, cards like Thorn of the Black Rose uh, sees a ton of play in any deck that runs black. As well as Palace Sentinels and a lot of decks that play white. Other noteworthy cards from this year were Thraben Inspector, who sees ton of play still, Pulse of Marasa in sideboards, and even Gearseeker Serpent in some of the Grixis Affinity builds. 2017 Sacred Cat from Amonkhet. So, for those of you who play a lot of Blue White Callgate, obviously you know Sacred Cat is basically your entire lifeline in that deck, uh, being able to bring you back from the brink of defeat with a large, huge burst of lifelink. Basically, it is two bodies for the cost of one card. Very cost effective, very low to the ground creature that can get very aggressive. And it's just an all around very uh, cost effective threat as well as enabler for being able to shore up the match and kind of balance things out. Uh, a few other cards worth mentioning Metallic Rebuke and God Pharaoh's Faithful. Rebuke seeing a lot of play in affinity builds. And God Pharaoh's Faithful obviously being one of the combo finishes for the Blue White X Familiar deck. 2018 actually brought nothing of relevance that year in the Pauper format. Not even a noteworthy card, so it was kind of a down year for Pauper that year. Uh, no commons that really see play a lot in anything, so unfortunately we're just not going to say anything for 2018. But we're going to come back super strong in 2019 as we have a bunch of very powerful cards here. So 2019, Ephemerate from Modern Horizons. So Modern Horizons was very kind to commons and the pauper format as they brought us a ton of really, really good cards. I choose Ephemerate simply for the fact that it is abused in a ton of different ways and in a ton of different decks. Uh, Enter the Battlefield abilities is very, very popular and strong strategy. And Ephemerate just allows you to continuously blink them time and time again. And it has rebounds, so you're essentially going to cast it twice for the cost of one. And Ephemerate just works very, very well in collaboration with things that uh, obviously want to enter the battlefield. And it's just a very cost effective. Other cards in this set that were absolutely bonkers are cards like Arkham's Astrolabe, which is obviously banned because it's so powerful. Uh, it utilizes Snowlands. Uh, you also got Defile, which is a premium black removal spell now. Instead of killing it, it just gives it neg one, neg one for each swampy control, so it gets around things like Indestructible. Weather the Storm, very powerful sideboard strategy card for gaining life. Ginger Brute and Mystic Sanctuary, another card that is currently banned in the popper format. Uh, being able to get back your, you know, your your best instance cards is just an absolute, you know, killer when you, uh, or in the late games and you're able to get the mystic sanctuary and they're untapped you were able to get back key cards that you may need 2020 i'm going to give it to cast down from double masters as this was the set that was actually downshifted so cast down gets the nod here because before that you kind of had like maybe like doom blade and stuff as your premium removal uh even like snuff out but snuff out didn't get popularized till the Telerian terror decks came out so I feel like Cast Down definitely deserves it as it is basically the, the premier removal spell in the entire format since you don't deal with legendaries in this format. Uh, it obviously is just a simple you know removal spell at that point. So Cast Down definitely gets the nod. Other noteworthy cards from 2020 are Cleansing Wildfire, a very popular strategy for ramping and suffocating fumes and Fiery Cannonade, both of which being instant speed pseudo board wipes very very good in a format that doesn't have a lot of board wipes these two do very well 2021 may be the very best year for the popper format and i'm going to give the award to chatterstorm from modern horizons 2. i say this because of the fact that when people talk about the most broken decks from the popper format ever the usually first thing comes up is like golgari storm with chatterstorm and all your 
you know, your uh, cabal rituals and desperate or dark rituals and stuff. Chatterstorm was a very, very powerful deck. And obviously, Wizards Coast do not learn their lesson when it comes to storm mechanics and storm cards. As there's another card on this list here shortly that somebody broke as well. So Chatterstorm's absolutely insanely powerful. It had to be banned, shut down because Storm just can't ever live because people will find a way to break it. I'm surprised they haven't even broken Weather the Storm yet. So other cards worth absolutely mentioning is the Indestructible Artifact Dual Lands, something that's never been seen before. So not only are they dual artifact lands, which would have been crazy to begin with, they're also indestructible, which opens up a lot of new and interesting uh, lines of play with things like Kanku Artificer, where you can animate them into creatures so they become indestructible artifact creatures and such. Other cards in the set, Foundry Helix, Sojourner's Companion, Deadly Dispute. That was one I had to really contemplate. Deadly Dispute is probably one of not, if not the best draw engine spell when collabed with artifacts that also want to be destroyed. Blood Fountain, Voldaren Epicure, and Galvanic Relay was the one that I had to really think about which one was better, Chatterstorm or Galvanic Relay. And I just feel like Chatterstorm had a much, much more powerful deck at the time than Galvanic Relay. 2022, I'm going to give it to another clump of creatures, this time the initiative creatures from Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate. So, the initiative creatures are absolutely insane. If you think Monarch's good, and the playing during the initiative creatures was a huge mistake. Initiative, another, uh, another mechanic that was never meant for constructive play. It was more sent for the limited, as well as, you know, commander and stuff, multiplayer. Seeing the initiative creatures in a constructive format like Pauper, where even the commons were absolutely broken... And if you go later on to the Legacy format, they banned pretty much everything as well because of how powerful the initiative was and how you could just power through these dungeons over and over and over very fast. Especially when you paired it with things like Ephemerate that you could just blink your creature and get the enter the battlefield ability again and again and again. So the initiative creatures get the nod here, but this year is absolutely stacked as well. Cards like Experimental Synthesizer, Basilisk Gate, and the other Choose Your Color Gates gave birth to an entire archetype destroy evil and sticker goblin which is a whole different you know, whole different ball game sticker goblin is very 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 busted on magic the gathering online and still is pretty decent in paper but and obviously Talarian terror came out which gave birth to another archetype so this whole this, that whole year gave birth to multiple archetypes you know with your call gates your uh, terror decks your boros synthesizers stuff like that so and now we're arrived in the current year of 2033. Well, that was actually last year, but the fact that we're not even we don't have a set yet for 2024. I just wanted to say 2023. So the best card from 2023 has to have been all that glitters from Commander Masters as it's downshifted from Uncommon. The card absolutely destroys right now in the Glitter Squad or the Glitters Affinity. It basically designed a, an entirely new af- approach to affinity of rather going wide, bunch of creatures for free. You can just put a bunch of creatures out, then slap one of these on there and make it into a, basically a pseudo Bogles Voltron style creature. And it's just amazing what one card could do for an entire archetype like that. But uh, this whole year, the whole year 2023 gave a bunch of really, really good cards. Things like the land cycling cards from Lord of the Rings. You know, your Lorien Revealed, your Troll of Kaza Dooms. That has never been seen before. In collaboration with the, the newly uh, land card, dual land cards that have the actual types on them, you can now basically tutor for dual lands and pauper, which is absolutely crazy when you think about how far along we've come. It's just, it's it's amazing the the strides that we are taking in this format. Other cards like Cast in the Fire, Goblin Tomb Raider, and the always popular Tithing Blade are all very powerful cards that absolutely are seeing play across the board and uh, obviously are going to continue to make a splash and impact in the meta. So that is it, everybody. We have made it from 1993 all the way to 2023. Uh, There's probably still a lot of cards I didn't name, but I didn't want to go too deep into detail. Uh, If there's any cards that I missed or you think are better or should have been swapped out for the best card from each year, let me know in the comment section below. Like I said, this is my opinion and, uh, you know, everybody's entitled to their opinion, but I just wanted to 
get it out there and kind of put it out there for you to kind of look at. So other than that, I hope you guys have a great, incredible week, and uh, I will see you guys all in the next video.